Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. Um, this is the Silent Pocket uh, 20 liter pack. Um, first off though, I want to thank very much Silent Pocket for uh, sending this little guy along. And by the way, sorry for the change of perspective, but it's a big old pack here. Hashtag sock reveal. But anyways, um, this is, uh, I want to thank Silent Pocket for sending this guy along. I told them, as always, that I would talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the product. And they still sent it along, so uh, there you go. Uh, but means probably the best quality controlled one ever, and uh, yeah. Anyways, I uh, tried not to uh, have too much bias here. Size comparison. This thing's freaking huge. Um, I, I mean, seriously. Uh, here it is against a standard U.S. foot. Uh, of course, here it is against your, uh, Spydeco Delica, so you can see, absolutely freaking huge. And, uh, I think that ought to do it for size comparison. Then finally, uh, a quick note on this guy. This is a really weird product in that it, do, it does two things exactly. This is a Faraday cage, uh, meaning that it has a foil material on here which blocks signals um, 800 megahertz to uh, 5 gigahertz, which means that this inside this main compartment will block cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, RFID, pretty much any electromagnetic signal that we use for uh, information. This will block once this is rolled over. Um, and then it is also a waterproof bag. And so, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. This very interesting bag here. So first off, on the good side, this is huge. I mean, seriously, this is a ginormous freaking bag. I mean, come on. I can... I can put most of my freaking leg in this bag. This is how big this bag is. And given it shrinks a little bit once you start the... Well, I can't do that with my leg in there. But seriously, this is absolutely ginormous. Um, I've used it a couple of times, actually, to haul, like, a bunch of boxes to the post office. This would be great for coming home from the grocery store. This is a big old pack, though. And with it fully loaded, you feel like freaking Santa Claus on there. <laughs> and so it's kind of crazy. But that is good. I mean, there is a lot of capacity with this guy. Next thing, this is absolutely Faraday cage. I tested this this in a couple of different ways. I tested it by using my phone in there and having the fiance give me a call. Uh, and uh, indeed, when this guy was uh, sealed, the, the phone did not ring. And when the, it was not sealed, the phone rang. Similarly, I've used it with Bluetooth, where I'll use like Bluetooth headphones and listen to music, and then I'll put it in uh, into there. And what's kind of cool about it, actually, is that, you know, if you just hold it like this, it does not cut the Bluetooth signal off. But then the moment you give it a fold, that completes the, the seal, and then it's no longer doing that. And so, you know what? I kind of found that awesome. Just from a purely scientific standpoint, this really is a Faraday cage, and that's that's awesome. Uh, one thing to note, though, is that the exterior compartment here is absolutely not, so uh, don't expect the CIA to not be able to get into this compartment or whatever. Um, next thing, this is, in fact, very water-resistant. Um, this is billed as being a dry bag, and so, like any sane human, I decided, you know what? I'll wear it in the shower. And so I did. Um, yeah. I know. What does the fiancé doing here? She puts up with a lot. But um, what I did is I put a bunch of paper towels in there, um, and I, specifically I made like a, a grid of ink on them with a uh, fountain pen that I knew would, you know, absolutely start smearing if there was any water in there at all. And the thing is, even when I tried very, very hard to get this bag wet, you know, I'm, I'm literally blasting it with a shower head at every angle here. Um, the, the, the interior compartment here stayed dry. And that's actually really impressive. And this was like a hot shower. I was trying really hard to make this fail, and I, I, I really basically couldn't. And so that's kind of cool. Um, I appreciate the fact that it is very water resistant. And then finally, I got to say, it's not unattractive. The, uh, the, the finishing on this guy, uh, hold on. Got your little MTG thing there. See a little bit of water spotting here. Hashtag hard water. But anyways, um, but it's not unattractive. It's a pretty material. So um, that's what's good to me is that it's pretty, pretty attractive. It is water resistant, at least in the main compartment. Not in the outside compartment again. It is a Faraday cage and it is huge in capacity. So if you are Santa and want to keep the Wi-Fi enabled toys safe, then here you go. Um, and you're in a rainstorm. Um, on the great front... <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 to me, what's great here is that they've made something this freaking specialized. Um, they have on their website the line, this is the most advanced waterproof Faraday backpack on the market today. Yeah, actually, I am 100% certain of that. In fact, I think it's the only waterproof Faraday backpack market on today, but you know what? That's a, that's great. Um, it amuses me just deeply that they have made something that, that is so specialized, and then they've made it even more specialized. It's, it's hilarious. And so, to me, what's great is that they bothered to make this damn thing.
On, on the bad side, first off, it's not super comfortable as a backpack. I mean, what you can see here is that when you roll this guy down, and I'll go ahead and roll it down a little bit, um, and then you tie it up at the top here, because this is how a dry bag generally works, um, you can see that it's a little bit awkward. And I am a broad-shouldered individual. This is just a thing, but it wears a little bit oddly on me. Even when it's fully, you know, stuffed, it just it doesn't quite sit right. And I find myself having to use these chest straps in order to keep this guy on, and it's, it's just, it's not, I don't know, it's just, it's really awkward. Um, and so I'm not a big fan of how this guy wears, and especially with this big guy up here at the top, it's, it's just not doing it for me at all. Next thing, this is also kind of awkward. Let's be real here. If you're walking around with this, this is not like a backpack that anybody has seen before. I mean, at the very least, when you're sitting there, I, just to give you a sense from afar, you know, it's, it's freaking huge, so. But I mean, this is what it looks like when you're wearing it. That's a little weird. It's a little awkward, and that's not great. So, um, there you go. Next thing, this exterior compartment here. This is actually one continuous compartment, so I'll, I'll show you that by putting my arm all the way through here. This is one big compartment, but it is not remotely freaking waterproof. And in fact, if we look in here, we can see it is still wet uh, from the shower yesterday. And it's got fabric and whatnot in there. Um, so this is a waterproof bag, except for the other part that isn't waterproof at all. And so that's that's just not great. Um, next thing, I'll just leave that open to dry out. Um, the uh, exterior compartment, like I said, is just one hold. And so I don't know why I've got two zippers here. It just feels like something is much more likely to fall out. And what, are you putting like your skateboard through there? I, I don't freaking know. I'm not a big fan of that. Next thing, there is a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of leakage, I think, inside the main compartment. When I had this guy, uh, you know, in the shower there, <laughs> I, I gave this a really strong, like, hug, basically, under the water. And I noticed a little tiny bit of bubbling right here. And in fact, on the inside of the pack, I felt, I think I felt, I'm not even 100% sure, but I think I felt a little bit of moisture right there. Um, and I definitely did, so that makes me think that there might be a little bit of lack of water tightness there. It's like one or two pinholes worth, but still. I would classify this as a very, very water-resistant bag. I mean, I would not hesitate to wade through a river or something with gear in this, but if you need something that will be completely watertight, then you might want to check it very carefully and make sure that yours actually is. Um, and then finally, on the bad side, this is a lot of freaking money. It's 180 bucks for this guy, and that's a lot of money, and especially given that you can get a 20-liter drink dry bag for 40 bucks. Holy cow, are you paying? So um, that's the bad, is that it's a lot of freaking money. There is a little bit of water leakage into the main compartment. Maybe, I think, um, the exterior compartment is just one hold and it is absolutely not waterproof or Faraday. It is a little bit awkward as a backpack and it's not super comfortable. On the ugly front, there are two things. Um, first off, there are only two pockets here. There's this outer one and then there's this big sack in the middle there. That's right, inside there, hold on, let me get a flashlight. Always a nice thing to be a flashlight reviewer some days is... Oh, damn it, the flat battery's not in there. Guys, a freaking mess over here. Here we go, ETAC D25A. If we look inside of here, we can see that there is not a damn thing in here but just a sack. There are no other pockets. There's no laptop sleeve. There's no nothing. This is just one gigantic pocket. Um, and for something that is meant to carry technology, that's meant to be like a laptop bag, why not just sew in a little laptop sleeve? Yeah, come on, guys. And so you end up in this situation where you've got a bag, but you need to fill your bag with bags in order for it to work. And that's a little bit too yo dog for me. I'm not a big fan of the recursion there. And so a bag full of bags isn't appealing, and so I'd like to see at least a couple of other pockets inside there for this to be a practical pack. And the other issue with this is that, honestly, you don't freaking need a Faraday cage. I mean, there are the, the number of people who are actually, like, under threat of electromagnetic reconnaissance from a sleeping computer is, like, maybe 10. I, I, I may be underestimating by, like, 2. But still, this is not something that you need. There, it is not the case that somebody is hacking you right now. And that if you have your cell phone, I mean, unless you're, like, stealing cell phones or something like that, and you need them not the phone home, you do not need this. And I hate the fact that they are selling a lot of their stuff with fear. I mean, the Silent Pocket brand, they they, they make nice stuff. I mean, the, 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 it works. It does what it's happening. But they, they keep going, oh, that way you won't get hacked. Like, 
yeah, but you won't get hacked if you wear a normal backpack anyways. I don't know, that, that bothers me a fair amount. I don't like the FIA-based marketing that goes into a lot of these Faraday projects because, well, otherwise they couldn't sell you a Faraday cage. So um, that's the ugly to me, is that you probably don't need a Faraday cage backpack anyways, and there are only two pockets here. Final conclusions, this is so very, very strange. Because I feel like in the, in the grand scheme of life, there are people who need dry bags. There are people who need Faraday bags. These are both very valid niches, but the Venn diagram of where those two things overlap, where there is both a Faraday need and the dry bag need, is incredible. And it took me a little while to figure out who this is for. And I, I figured it out, though. This is the perfect bag for a CIA operative who is running from the FSB with a bunch of stolen laptops via kayak. Absolutely optimum here. Similarly, this is the very best bag in the world for hiding 150 stolen iPhones in a steam room. This is really, really good. Or if you've ever been disappointed that you cannot shower with your laptop without fear of it connecting to a compromised local Wi-Fi hotspot, this right here is the perfect bag for you. But for everybody else, I just don't quite get it. Because you can get a dry bag for 40 bucks, and you can get a Faraday pouch for your laptop from the very same people for 100 bucks. And at that point in time, you're getting the same basic idea. The things that need Faraday protection are protected, because well, none of them need that anyways, but that way you're not Faraday protecting your underwear, which are also in the bag with it. And honestly, it just doesn't work well as a backpack. A single sack backpack does not work for me. And I don't think it's going to work for a majority of people. So given that it's not super compelling as a backpack, it's very weird as a dry bag because you're paying a lot more than you need. And you probably don't need the Faraday thing anyways. Honestly, I, I just don't see it. I mean, it's nice to know that it's out there. But at the end of the day, I, I just... <laughs> I, I, unless you are in this little overlap in the Venn diagram of life, I don't see this one for you. So anyways, hope this has been interesting that I got this one in the bag... That wasn't even... Uh, yeah, yeah, I need to put this review in a Faraday cage so no one can see it. Anyways, oh, this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. It's time for me to pack it in. There we go. That one worked. Bye now.